this is the elbow that is from the factory. And I found this uh, back by the spindle over yonder where that coolant drain was. And uh, you may say this looks kind of weird and uh, that's because it does. I got a hose made for the system and it uses a uh, JIS fittings to NPT. So it's a little confusing and these adapters are really hard to find. Uh, but basically I said I want a five foot hose and then he made me a four foot hose and I didn't notice till I got home so that's why I had to extend that. It has to be five feet and or extended like this because of the Z travel uh, causes it to uh, bind up a little bit. So this is going to be the band-aid fix for now and uh, I'm going to see if I can get like an extension made or like a small NPT on both end, both ends of the hose just to make it a little bit longer. That'll probably be the best way to do it. That way he won't have to remake a hose and uh, yeah. So that's, that's that. That's this in the back. Oh, 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 look what we got. These are the new casters for the coolant tank. This is the old news. This is the new news. Awesome. The only thing is I uh, tried to size them as close as possible. This one's just slightly taller, maybe like an eighth of an inch to a quarter. But I think we should be okay. I think there's enough uh, gap there for the coolant tank to... Uh, Fit. Yeah, so all five of them needed to be replaced, and I uh, bought five of them. Also, the airline in the back that I'm replacing, got some uh, nice 25 feet of it, that's cool. And then I bought a whole bunch of uh, fasteners, all stainless, because what's on there is stainless, and uh, pretty much a perfect match to what's on there, so go McMaster. Uh, next, the coolant tank has the new casters on it, so that's good. The pump... Uh, the pump to motor uh, coupling, the bolts in here, were loose, so I tightened those up. It's got a, uh, what do you call it, an isolator inside on the shaft, so it's got like a plastic isolator, and uh, obviously if this is loose, it's going to destroy the isolator. So I tightened that up. They were very, like I could hand, the bolts are backing out, so yeah, that's kind of pitiful. Hose clamps are loose, both ends, tighten those up. Uh, I'm going to give the pump, I'm going to clean it up a little bit, uh, probably, I wanted to take this fan cover off, but unfortunately it's blocked, the the bottom Phillips on the other side is blocked by the bracket, and I don't really feel like taking the bracket off, I, I might get to it, maybe, I'm not too sure, uh, but the pump is pretty, the fan area is pretty dirty, so I'm going to see how much I can clean without taking it off and then make a determination from there. Then what I got, this is the uh, old vinyl vinyl hose and I got some new vinyl hose. I'm running vinyl hose on the Haas too and it's new filter and I haven't had any leak problems so I, I'm well aware it's uh, it's perfectly suited for this low pressure application. And then just some fittings. You know, stuff you need for this stuff. Um, so I'm going to replace this this hose. I don't actually know if it was yellow. <laughs> Everything else on the machine is yellow. It could have been that nice, you know, clear color but uh, so hopefully 10 feet is long enough, but we're about to find out. I, we should be good 10 feet. This is the distance. The pump sits under there and that, under that cabinet. So you're talking, you're talking a distance from right there, coming over here, to right here. The fitting's right here. So uh, we're going to uh, find out in a couple seconds if that's going to work. So my experience with this lathe has been interesting, and like most pieces of used equipment, the owners of equipment do things that are um, questionable by the next owners. I mean, it's not my piece of equipment, I'm not the one who paid for it, so it's not my place to judge, but at the same time, it is my place to judge, because now I'm the owner of the equipment. <laughs> So it's the same thing when you buy a used car, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm looking at the coolant system, and I've been doing that quite a bit, figuring out this whole turret coolant, th coolant thing. And I'm looking at the parts manual, and uh, so this is the tank, and uh, if you look at 17, 17, well, I'm not going to flip the page, but 17 says uh, oil tank. And if you look at my tank, 
Notice how there is something that is supposed to be bolted right here, but is in fact not bolted right there. Yeah, that would be where the oil tank goes. Now you may be wondering, why is there an oil tank bolted to the coolant tank? Well, very cool, very uh, neat feature this uh, here lathe has, and uh, I will show you what that is. There is a oil skimming um, system on here, if you will. Uh, you know, oil floats to the top of coolant, obviously, and it needs to be skimmed somehow. Let me get a light. Uh, as coolant flows down the casting, it'll catch oil in this tank here. There's uh, literally oil sitting right there in this tank. And uh, it's supposed to drain through there, or uh, maybe this one, mm -hmm. into that oil tank, because that would sit right under there. And uh, I don't have an oil tank now, so I'm going to have to use a bucket, like a peasant. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I'm wondering where my oil tank went. Alright, coming back to the diagram, the pump that's on here is also different than the one I have, but uh, I'm gonna guess that the pump that the machine came with was smaller than this one, based on said picture, or maybe this bigger pump was an option, so there's always that. Uh, there is a provision for another pump right here, so I'm guessing that's where that one would go. And uh, yeah, and then another thing I noticed is if you check this thing out right here, see this thing? That's a oil screener, I mean a uh, coolant screener. And uh, I didn't know where it went, I have it, which is great. I didn't know what it was, I thought it sat at the top of the tank. I will say when I bought the lathe, they were not using it. <laughs> it uh, It's supposed to pre-screen the f fluid in the tank from uh, chips entering the pump area. So it's supposed to sit in there like that, and uh, you get this cool little filter system. Well, um, it has to be installed to do anything, and uh, it was not. So, yeah, that's probably why chips got packed in the turret as well. Yeah, okay, uh, so that's a good sign. Uh, I am going to remove this elbow here. They put this elbow here because, again, if you look at the parts diagram, on the factory pump there is no elbow. It comes straight and it shows it going under the casting. And uh, that under the casting part right here corresponds to right there. Uh, it doesn't show how far it goes under. Or it might. No, it just leaves it up to interpretation. So. Uh, yeah, we're gonna interpretate our own coolant path for our line, but, uh, it's gonna be based on how much vinyl line we have. I just checked it, and there is enough with the pump sitting this way. I had to flip it around. Um, but, yeah, so we'll see if we can run some line that way, and just maybe clean up the look. And if not, it's okay to run it up this corner side. the pump all cleaned up good enough anyways for what I want uh, move that elbow I think I did that yesterday tank is as clean as I could get it by hand vacuumed all the extra little chips um, let's see so I, it was nine o'clock last night and I was gonna fill this thing with water and uh, kind of do that whole clean the tank thing and then I was like it's a little late so I don't want to accomplish that so I'm just gonna clean a little bit then I'm gonna go inside so I started cleaning the machine I was cleaning up the spindle area and I took this cover off right here, and there's a bunch of chips. There's a bunch of chips just packed up in there, so I'm cleaning that up. And then I'm like, oh man, there's some uh, there's some chips over here, <laughs> so I clean this up. And this entire area was just packed full of chips, and I was like, oh no. And uh, so I pulled the cover, I pushed the cover back, and then this entire the entire B axis area was covered in chips too. And I went, oh no. <laughs> so I spent I spent like another hour just cleaning this area. 
but I got it all nice and cleaned up and uh, yeah I also got the way covers nice and cleaned up too so I have to figure out how those get go back together grease them up slap them back together and call it good so my plan for the tank right now I had I had an idea so I'm gonna put uh, like a really light amount a low amount of fluid in here enough fluid for the pump to be able to pick it up and throw it back into the tank uh, just uh, to basically what I want to try to do is clean the sides of the tank or or clean the tank pick up any debris off the bottom of the tank uh, and uh, basically uh, drain it with the coolant then I was thinking well that's gonna kind of be difficult because you're still gonna have sediment so then I was thinking I was like what if I took the filter off the Haas and then I cycled and I used and I pumped it through the filter and then just recycled it back in the tank. That way the filter would start to pick up all the trash. And, um, yeah, we could do it that way. Uh, I'm going to hold off on pumping coolant through the turret until the tank is basically set up. Um, I, I figure it's probably better that way than the attempt to shove coolant into the tank. Or maybe what I can do is I can do my filter idea and have the coolant still go through the, through the turret. I'm not too sure because... The way the lathe kind of drains, you need to have the coolant tank under the, obviously, the casting. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to set that up with this this pump filter idea I'm cooking up. So, so yeah. Um, but let me figure out how difficult it is going to be to get the filter. I'm talking about the external filter I added to the Haas. That guy right there. I'd love to get one for the lathe, but I don't have enough money to buy one. <laughs> They're really expensive, like the setup. So the nice thing is the panel it's sitting on is removable. So what I can do is unhook the hose, the two hoses, and actually pick the whole thing up and bring it over and uh, jerry-rig something together. So I'm going to work on that, and then uh, we'll kind of see what my setup looks like. All right, we got the coolant transfer system in the house. Buckets. All right, I am hoping that 10 gallons is enough to jump over the lift for the pump, but I am almost certain it is not, so... I'm hoping for nothing, I guess. Looks like we need another five gallons. All right, it appears I'm gonna have to fill this thing with 20 gallons, which is which is, uh, you know, that's a lot of uh, bucket loading. And I only have two arms. See, the pump pickup is submerged down over yonder. But we'll see when it starts flowing. All right, I'm gonna set the filter thing up and uh, give it a shot. Okay, here's the setup. We're gonna take pump outlet, we're gonna go into a filter inlet, and then we're gonna go and put a hose here and we're just gonna run it back into the tank and we'll do a whole bunch of recycling for a while and uh, just kind of spray down different parts of the tank and make sure we can pick up all the loose crap in the filter. When that's done, we'll move over to the machine and uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the going plan. Okay, we got a really rudimentary setup. Uh, set up. So I borrowed the Haas hose, that just makes it really easy to go to there. And then I changed out this fitting for our smaller hose and uh, zip tied it, hoping that the hose doesn't whip around, but you never know. And I got to wire the pump in, like I said in another video. The, they're not labeled, so hopefully I get it right the first time. If not, it's gonna spin the pump backwards, but as long as you unhook power really quick, it should be okay. So I'll just do that until obviously it starts flowing coolant. Um, yeah, so let me work on that. It'll probably take me a little while. All right, after spending the last three hours learning how to back up the FANUC parameters, we are back to the pump. All right, I know wire nuts not allowed on a vibrating type device, but this is a temporary thing to see, make sure we get the wires in the correct spot because again, my picture didn't include the fact that the wires to the motor had no color. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to turn the machine on and uh, we're going to try to see if uh, this thing is correct.
Oh, that was weird. Flood coolant, but not... I was expecting it to. Oh, you know what it was? I think, uh... I, for some reason, expected it to immediately come out of here, and uh, it's got to fill this entire canister up before it comes out of here. So let's try it without it uh, trying to fill the thing and make sure it's going the right way. Pump performance seems lackluster. I wonder if that's just how much fluid it'll flow. I mean, if it dropped a leg, would it even spin? It doesn't sound that good either. No, the internet says it won't even start if it's missing a phase. So that makes sense. So seeing as I can start and stop it, start, start and stop it pretty readily, and it is actually flowing coolant, my guess is it's spinning the correct way. But it doesn't sound that good, but, I mean, it is an old pump, so maybe it's okay. I'm going to hook it up to the filter and kind of let it run, and if it catches on fire, then, well, something was wrong. Um, yeah, it's not even bringing up pressure on the gauges. I would think a half half horsepower motor would put out a little more oomph than this, but I don't know. Let me uh, switch some wires around. All right, I uh, took the back of the pump apart just to make sure it's free spinning, and it seemed pretty good. I uh, I'm guessing this is about as much as this thing can put out. I'm getting like 1.8 amps on all legs, so obviously it's getting power equally. Uh, I mean, it's just a tired motor, I guess, and I think after it travels through some hoses and then some tighter orifices. It should be enough pressure uh, to uh, accomplish what I need for now anyway, so I don't want to take it any further. I kind of need to get the lathe uh, running, you know? I kind of need to make money at some point. So yeah, that's, uh, I'm gonna let this cycle for an hour or so, uh, clean up, you know, what's here, and then I'll set it up to go through the turret, make sure nothing leaks there, and then I'll button the turret back up and then let that run for a little while, cycling through here. So basically it's picking stuff up, going through this filter, and then just coming back out, and it's going in a circle. It's, uh, that's how these things work. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. The tank is under there, so you gotta be careful in stepping on the thing. And uh, let's do a walk around together, that way we can see if I forgot anything. That hose is hooked up, that hose is hooked up, electrical looks hooked up. Ooh. Uh, here's the tank. I mean the uh, filter. That hose is hooked up. Sweet. This one's tight. This one's tight. Then I'm just gonna go straight up into the system here. I'm hoping no leaks back here. There's electrical stuff. So that's tight down there. I tighten that. All right, we're gonna we're gonna give her a shot. World first for you guys. And, uh, here we go. Oh boy. He's a farter. My god, that's a lot of coolant. Nice! That was awesome! It works! It works! It works! It's a rock! Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Okay, well, I'm gonna move it into a place where it doesn't do that. It's like, uh, like, I got holes back here that are not filled that one and uh, that one down there. So I don't want to spray back there, so I'm going to figure out something to get it to just come straight down to the tank. But this is awesome. Well, after the excitement left me, I realized it was leaking again. <laughs> right where uh, the nozzle contacts the back of the plate. Yeah, it's 
supposed to come out of there? Okay, I'm starting to think that this design is inherently meant to leak. So, I took this side cover off where the arrow was, and I didn't even know you were able to see the nozzle, but... There it is. So, I pushed it around with a screwdriver a little bit, like, uh, while I was on. And it's feeling a lot better now, but you can see it's still dripping at the bottom there. But I may just have to live with this. I think that's pretty good from having no coolant to this, but you can uh, see what I'm talking about. It's kind of dribbling around the nozzle. Obviously, it's really dependent on the nozzle geometry, so maybe I didn't face it straight enough or something. But I might have to just live with it. Alright guys, I don't know if you're going to hear me, it's pretty loud. But this is the uh, final bit for this video. So it's a couple days later, I finally got the entire system uh, set up. So here's the conveyor. Let me shut the off. Here's the uh, conveyor. The pan is supposed to look like this. I still need to clean the pan. But I got this all set up as best uh, from the factory as I can tell. And uh, I got Call the Cam 250C is what I'm running. Because that's what I'm running in the mill, so make it nice and universal. Uh, let's see. Uh, as far as leaking goes in the turret, it's not too bad. Some spots are worse than others, so I'm just going to run with it. Um, I found, like I said, if you take the ring off, it's easy to get to the nozzle. Um, so I think it's changeable in the future, and once the lathe is running, it'll be easier to make a more concentric, uh, more more flat nozzle than the mill and soft jaws. Um, so I'm just going to run with it. There's a little bit of a dribble I'll show you. So it's not, it's not terrible, and uh, hold on, let me move the turret forward and I'll do a tool change. So I'm going to switch to the next tool, which is, uh, it shoots out the side, that's why I wanted to move it. So you can see it slows down a little bit, so that I just, I just literally sprayed my legs. <laughs> so, you can see the uh, drip rate isn't too bad. But we also have really nice flow, so this is definitely uh, what I'm gonna I'm gonna run with it for now. Um, I have I'm completely out of time for running this thing, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna go around back, show you what I have set up for now, and then I'm gonna end this video. So I'm sorry about the air noise. I had to order uh, new fittings for the push the lock. There's uh, the O rings are bad in them. Um, so for now. I'm running, I took the filter, like I said, off the Haas, and uh, I'm just pumping the new quality chem even through this filter and just straight up into the manifold. Uh, the new hose I got is, uh, I'm having issues with the adapters. If you run a uh, NPT hydraulic, they're straight threads, so you need an O-ring on your adapter, and these are regular tapered NPT, um, so they leak, which I didn't know. And like I said, there are so many different hose fittings, it's, it's actually really frustrating. Um, so there's a large possibility that I'm just going to get another bit of vinyl and run it like looped like this because if you have the loop proper it won't even touch any of the uh, the uh, current electrical lines so I'm not worried about rubbing or anything. Um, eventually I will upgrade and get a nice filter for the lathe but this is this setup right here is like 500 plus dollars so I'm going to hold off for now but uh yeah, I'm just doing this, get all the majority of the loose, the rest of the loose chips and everything. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this uh, part two of this turret repair. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you like stuff like this, please sub. Um, definitely, next couple videos, hopefully we'll be running it and setting it up, and I'm pretty excited about that. But uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching.